All right, let's solve this question. This is about a certain farmer who wants to allocate her expenditures and she wants to allocate the expenditures in a way that she maximizes her profits during the coming year. Now, we have to see something about expenditures and profits. Now, when you read further, the first thing that it tells you is about the different expenditures that she has. C is what she spends on cropland, F is what she spends on fertilizer, L on labor, M on machinery and S on seeds. So these are, first of all, the different areas, the different categories on which she has some expenditure. Now, how does this connect with profit? Because that is what the goal was. That's what you find next, that she has estimated that if she allocates at least 100 euros to each of these five categories, then her profit during the coming year will be, and you have this expression. So this is how the expenditure then connects with the profit. So I'll just put this properly. It said, if all of these are at least 100, so greater than equal to 100, then you can use this model to find the profit. And the profit is in that case given by this expression. I'll write this. Perfect. Now, this much we understand. If this happens, then this is the profit. And this is what she needs to maximize. Remember, that is her overall goal. How do I maximize? By allocating my expenditures. So all of these expenses that I'm doing, how do I allocate this or reallocate this, whatever? How should I split this so that I can maximize my profit? And remember, this model for profit will only work if this condition is met. With that, let's read what the question further says. It says she wishes to calculate the benefits of expenditure great than 100 euros in one of these categories if she were to spend exactly 100 euros in each of the others. So here she's considering something. She's saying, what if I spend 100, 100 exactly on four of these categories and on one of them, I spend more than 100. Now, right now, I just wrote it under S, but that is not anywhere mentioned. It is just saying one of these categories, she will increase beyond $100 and for the others, it will be 100, 100. So what I wanted to first of all show you is that these are all still greater than equal to 100, which means for the conditions that she is trying to judge, you know, calculating the benefits for that, this model through which she was getting the profit, it still works. So you can still use the profit equation, this expression to find different, different profits that you will get by maybe keeping S more than 100 or M or L and so on. So for example, I'll just take, uh, for example, I increase S to 101. In that case, I will just put this value of S as 101 and all of the others will be 100. So all of these will be 100, 100 and I will get the profit in that case. Similarly, if S is 102, then you just put that 102 here and 100, 100, 100 for all of the others. That's how we're simply putting the exact value of the expenses here in this expression to get the total profit. With this, we've completely understood everything that was given. It was not the easiest or the most simple ways of representing information, but because we read things nice and slow, we've understood everything first, where the model was, and then what is her current situation? What is she trying to check? If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. With this, let's just see what the question is asking. So here we are. It says you need to select for greatest returns, which is this column header, you need to select what? The resource for which. So resource, okay, these are the C, F, L, the same things. The resource for which, according to the desired calculation from the model, this is the profit model, the expression that we have, each euro of spending beyond 100 euros is predicted to make the greatest contribution to profits or the least to losses. I'll just pause here. Look here once. If all of these values are greater than equal to 100, then notice that the numbers that I'm subtracting, they're always less than 100, which means each of these factors will be positive in my situation, in this situation, which means there is no case where a loss will happen. It will be a profit. Even if all of these were 100, it would still be a profit. And of course, if I increase any of them, that factor will just increase. So it is explaining further how least losses is also the same thing in our case. But for this particular question, losses are out of the question because of the model you're working with. 
So what do you need to find for greatest returns? You need to see that out of these five categories on which she's spending money, where is it that every extra dollar, every extra euro that she spends above 100, where is it that it will increase the profit the most. Then you think about the same thing for least and we'll come to that. But first, let's only focus on greatest. So understand this very nicely. Basically, what I'm saying is that when I do this for S, when I did 101, I showed you how the new expression will be. Only S will be 101. All of the others will be hundreds. Versus, suppose I do this for M. I change M to 101 and keep the others at 100. I am really comparing that between these two cases, just M and S as I took as examples, between these two, which one will increase my profit more. This is the starting level. This is the expression for profit for any of these situations. I have to see what brings about a greater increase. So essentially what I'll do is I'll first take what is the basic prof profit that is guaranteed, which I will take by taking all of these equal to 100. And beyond that point, then we will have an increase in profit depending on which out of these values we increase. So let's just take this aside here. So first, I'm just putting what will the profit be if all of these are 100. I'm simply putting the value of 100 for all of these variables here. And this is the profit that she will generate next year in such a case. Now we had to see increasing which one brings the greatest contribution to profits, each euro of spending beyond 101. So we're really going to see what just one euro extra does. Now at this point, I can do it for all five of these also. But another thing I can do is just observe this first. Look how out of all of these numbers that are being subtracted, 97 is the closest to 100. So this is going to give me one extreme where increasing C from 100 to 101 will change this from just 3 to 4. Another extreme is if I take the one which is farthest away, which is this 87. In this case, changing M from 100 to 101 will change this from 13 to 14, a bigger magnitude value. All of the others will create a smaller factor change. So I'll first work on these two extremes and then let's see what we can infer from there. So maybe I change my C to 101 and all of them, all of the others I keep as is. So only changes this 3 which changes into a 4. Rest of the values will stay the same. This is one extreme. Another will be where instead of C, I take M, which was the farthest away, and I change that. This time, notice that only this expression, the 13 factor, will change into 14. I'll just simply put all of the others identical. This, and I'm putting the new value here in red. Now, although both of them have led to an increase in profit because of one factor increasing, I will try to see which one brought a bigger increase in profit. Between the two extremes, if I get which one brings a bigger change, all of the others will fall between that. It will not be that big an increase as the bigger one gets, and it will not be that small an increase as the smaller one gets. So let me see which one will lead to a bigger change. Notice here that 8, 5, 10, these are common between these two changes also. So essentially, if I just combine it here, 4 times 13, that is 52. And I have 52, 8, 5, 10. While this one here, if I combine the 3 and the 14, then that's 42. And then I have 8, 5, and 10. So if I'm trying to compare the products, obviously the 8, 5, 10, they are not going to make an impact. It's the 52 and the 42 which will decide which one increases more. Obviously, because my 52 is a greater number, I am sure that this is a greater profit compared to what I have here with M. So if I have the result for my extremes, then I can conclude some things here. So when I increase my C to 101, I will get the greatest profit because this is the greater one between these two. And this is the lesser profit for M. This therefore, because it was on an extreme, increasing this will give me the least profit increase. I should write the word increase, greatest profit increase, least profit increase. All of the others will fall here in the range. You can try it for any one of them. I'll just do one for you. Maybe let's see what happens if L is increased to 101. So let me just put this here in a separate color. This is just extra to convince you that this is what's happening. When you find something on the extremes, all of the other values always fall in the middle. So when I change only my L, what all stays the same? The three stays the same. 8 goes to 9, but every other value does not change. So it's only this that has changed. Now, if you try to compare it with, say, C, then you will notice that 5, 13, 10, that's identical. 
This is four times eight, thirty-two. This is twenty-seven. So thirty-two is a greater profit increase than this twenty-seven can bring. So I already found that L therefore is less than C. It confirms that L is not the greatest. Same way, when you try this for S and for F, you will find that they are also less than C. Similarly, if you compare L with M, just look carefully what all is common. You have the three identical. You have the five identical. You have the ten identical as well. Now, fourteen times eight versus nine times thirteen. When you will see nine times thirteen is a greater value, which means L is here between M and C, which is exactly what you will find for all of the others as well. So I'm not comparing them separately, but L, S, and F will come here between these two values. Since the first blank that we had read was finding where I'm getting the greatest profit increase, I already have my answer for the first value in the table. So I'll come here, and because it's C, I will mark cropland. At this point let me ask you this could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented such is the power of the process of owning the data set and because this skill may not come naturally to many of you we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the egmat di course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz In fact, in the TPA Quant modules in the two-part analysis course, we teach you how to get comfortable with this question type. You will gain the confidence to handle any question of this type in the most efficient manner. We serve more than 58 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you can learn various aspects of this question type, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Now, when you read the question further, it says also select for least returns. This column here, the resource for which, according to the calculation, each euro of spending beyond minimum necessary amount that's still talking about hundred dollars because that is when your model starts working is predicted to make least contribution. to profits so i actually ended up finding both of these things in my analysis i found the greatest profit at c and i found the least profit here when i change m so we'll come here and mark m for this one we are done let's summarize this so very very interesting question language was very different not something that you usually see it talked about some expenditures in five different categories it talked about a certain condition which has to be met for us to be able to use this profit model and now there was this farmer who wanted to see that which category should i increase my expenditure on so that it leads to the greatest increase in profit a typical mistake can be simply to assume that greatest increase will be when you take this one that is already the farthest so that this is the one that goes from 13 to 14 it just feels that because you're dealing with bigger values it will have more of an impact but essentially the rest of the values which stay the same that is where you will see most of the change so when we try to find where i'm getting the greatest returns and the least we found it for our extremes here first to see where your value is closest to 100 where it's farthest away and the extremes told us that in fact where the value was the closest to 100 this 97 thing this is where you ended up getting the greatest profit and in m where the value was the farthest away this is where you ended up getting the least profit all of the others were in between and these are exactly what you wanted to find so you marked them here so translation heavy question inference heavy question understanding everything here owning the data set was very very important if you had a half understanding of how the model works what this is you would not be able to think this through and this translation here was also very interesting what are the values that you're looking for so a lot of skills you saw here inference translation everything had a very very important role to play